Yo guys, welcome to the last lap. Don't forget to drop a lovely juicy five star rating if you're watching an Apple podcast or Spotify. Hope you enjoy and let's get into it. There was an interesting quote um, that I found on um, from Verstappen, Max Verstappen's kind of socials talking about um, Le Mans mm -hmm. and how potential him, Sebastian, Fernando, Oh, that'd be Le Mans cool. super team. Vettel quoted saying, I'm not old, but maybe we could do it together. Fernando quoted saying, I know Max would like to drive the 24 hour Le Mans. I'm definitely open to doing that together. Um, maybe Jos can act as team manager. Not so sure about that part personally. Okay, we'll yeah, no, the, mm -hmm. um, Come on, surely. Is this the era of like in the NBA, they've got like all these super, super teams. They call them. Is this the era now of super teams where it's just like. Uh, <clears throat> yeah, because you know it, it, it's three drivers, isn't yeah. it, for, for Le Mans? Plus, it's like they, I'm pretty sure if they kind of went into like the paddock and were like, hey, I'm available. Mm. Everyone would be like, yo. <laughs> I don't think, I mean, obviously people have like contracts, but they'd be like, um, you'd be kind of stupid to be like, no, nah, no, nah, we're good. We're yeah. good. Like, yeah. sorry, Max, mate. You just. Cause... How many have you won, Max? <laughs> yeah. I don't, mm, who are you? No, I don't, I don't think that's true. Cause... One all stars. Sure, like, no disrespect <laughs> to Brendan Hartley, but he came in, had a pretty mediocre F1 career and has had loads of success mm -hmm. in uh, endurance racing and. But I think this is the, the Ashen, rise of motorsport now. This is I it. We're on the kind of, not even a crest of a wave yet. I think this is just, it started with F1. And F1 is kind of obviously like the, the pinnacle of motorsport. Mm -hmm. And I think it's kind of filtering down. Because I was kind of th like of the opinion, I kind of guessed that Ricardo was going to come back to Red Bull. That was a guess as well. So that kind of happened. But I was like, kind of, it would be cool. If he went if he went NASCAR or if he went mm. to mm. Um, IndyCar, the amount of eyeballs that would kind of <clears> transfer shift, over yeah. with yeah. him. And He's the biggest these... F1 driver in the States. By a country mile. Yeah. It so doesn't matter. He, he would be result. kind of stupid not to do that at some point, I feel. Verstappen and <clears throat> Hamilton are nowhere near Ricardo yeah, yeah. in terms of the States. Yeah. Which yeah. is the biggest market, arguably. I mean, because obviously Kimi did a little bit of stock car. Yes. Um, and the amount of attention he got doing that. I mean, I found myself watching, like, what's going on? Like, what's happening? Cool, yeah. cool car, whatever. Yeah. If someone of that caliber, even if they were like XF1, the amount of people, look at what sort of Grosjean's doing over there mm -hmm. and um, the other guys. That. Yeah, like, yeah. They're, they're not doing a bad job of it. And I think they're great ambassadors for F1. And they're great ambassadors for whatever series that they're in. Yeah, so it's kind of a, I almost feel like F1 should be kind of encouraging it or sort yeah, of yeah. like sort of extending a hand to the sort of IndyCar and NASCAR and kind of going, well, look, if you want to grow it in America, start talking to the fans that are already watching motorsport that aren't watching F1. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that is, it's interesting point. It's like, how do you perceive, you know, it's, it's all motorsport whether you're racing on ice, whether you're racing on tracks, whether it's open wheel, whether it's closed wheel. Two wheel, whatever, three yeah. wheel, four wheel, whatever. And and a lot of the, the skill set carries over. Uh, sure, there's some drivers who are, you know, I would, wouldn't necessarily expect, you know, someone to go straight from F1 and win at Le Mans because that's, <clears throat> yeah, that's, I think yeah, that's exactly, to discredit yeah. the quality that you've got yeah, already absolutely. in those series. But yeah, I, I think for me, it's like the table is big enough for everyone to eat. And the more that the bigger the table can get, everyone benefits all, long term. Was it all boats rise when they rise together? That's probably not. That's that inspirational. You know I mean? that's, that's, I'm feeling that's good inspired. enough for us. That's, that's inspirational. I'm feeling inspired. Well, I mean, we've got you know, the chief check, uh, fact checker over there. He's not going to be able to know, is he? Yeah, he doesn't. True. Yeah. And know everything about your career. <laughs> Apparently so. <sorry. laughs> <laughs> do you think they do it? And also, you had um, Kevin and his dad, Jan, yeah, race yeah, together, together, didn't they? Oh, that was wholesome. That's pretty cool. That was pretty cool. Jan and Max, but Jos and Max, yeah. yeah. I would love to see the F1 drivers do more multidiscipline. Like we see it a little bit with race of champions, don't we? I was we? about to say, yeah, yeah. yeah. That's the only place we really see it. That just driving around. Yeah. I mean, like if, if Mick's doing reserve driving, name super reserve, but I don't know, like kind of build a, a bit of a sort of background doing other stuff as well. Yeah. I don't think like it's going to take anything away from you as an F1 driver if you can drive the wheels off an Indy car mm. every now and then. Yeah. Well, with occasion, remember when Fernando did the Indy 500 and Jensen? Mate, I was, I was like, so excited for the Indy 500. We didn't see. No it. idea what it was. I was like, <laughs> yes, <laughs> yes. <laughs> That's what I mean. They're kissing the bricks. They're yeah. drinking milk. Because <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. I feel like if you're into motorsport, you if you're exposed enough to other types of motorsport, mm. you, you can enjoy it. Yeah, thousand. Absolutely. It is about getting people in the first place. And, and I think you can make that, about. that yeah, pie yeah. bigger. Because the bigger the pie is, the more interest there is, the more prices for everything comes down mm -hmm. as well. 
that 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 because look, motorsport is never going to be anywhere near as accessible as football no. or American like wh whatever. Yeah, right, no. is never going to be as accessible as that. But it's still very you know if your parents have got money or they're an ex driver, then you're good. Yeah, yeah, you're yeah, going to get opportunities. Sure. You know what I mean? And you end up with the same type of person coming into the sport. And everyone going, mm. it's the same type of person in the yeah. sport. What's going on? Yeah. So yeah, I think if you kind of reverse, if you look at it from a much wider lens, look at it from the grassroots level, you are going to end up having more people from different backgrounds and mm -hmm. different experiences and walks of life, mm. kind of going, oh, I can do that. I mean, obviously, yeah. like Lewis is is doing that with what he's been doing in the last couple of years and his advocacy. Um, I think it makes the sport itself so much stronger as well. And it makes it more appealing. Yeah, it well, just it's feeds itself. To everybody, yeah. Yeah, exactly. But that's the thing, like, since we got more eyeballs on these drivers as human beings, you can literally, I don't know, I, maybe it's not an exception, but I feel like with F1, there's so many different personalities. Mm. Yeah. Like, Ricardo, totally different to Kimi, totally different to Sebastian. But there's only, it's because there's only 20. You know, like, it's a, we True. Football. It's a small pool. Yeah. Football is across the world. Mm -hmm. Yeah. How many, I don't know, hundreds of leagues at varying levels. Yeah. Like, I can, like, obviously follow Kylian Mbappe and then, I don't know, De Bruyne and, you know, all, all mm. these different people. There's thousands and it, of there's footballers thousands that you see them. Yeah. So every month, realistically. Right. Yeah. So I, I think where you've got 20, it's, got, oh, it's very exclusive. And as you yeah. said, now you can really hone in on people's characters a lot mm. more because there's not so many people to kind of get them lost in each other so i think yeah yeah i, th I think and i think a big character going into next year as well mm -hmm. is fernando alonso mm -hmm. hey. I, I was uh, on the on the way up i was i was looking at um he's done his little launch yeah, yeah. aston martin yeah. with his helmet <laughs> how do we think that's going to go because <clears throat> i think it all never he's, lasts he's still well like, he's, he's 41 now and i know his age always gets mentioned we're all getting older. Yeah. I'm I'm 30 in a couple of weeks. So Jesus. Tough. Jesus. Yeah, I know, right? <laughs> Imagine no, I'm turning 32 Damn. this year. Making me feel feel old. We're getting old, we're getting old, boys. Oh my back hurts. But it, yeah, it, my, it, my lower back. <laughs> oh, lower back. I think I think the Alonzo Aston Martin movie is, is one of the more interesting ones moving forward because he's I feel like this surely has to be the last roll of the dice for him. He's banking on this opportunity coming good. You sound like you don't think it's going to work. Aston Martin were... Uh, maybe, maybe not. Aston Martin were much better. Like, if you look at the tail end of last season, they were up there with McLaren and Alpine, I feel like, in terms of pace. Well mm. clear of Alfa Romeo. Do we think that's going to pay dividends? I and mean, do we think... You've, you've seen the Lawrence Stroll energy. Oh, right. first hand. <laughs> <laughs> Them two in a room... I mean, that's either going to go exceptionally or awfully, surely. Uh, I I think it's going to go well because you, if, if you're no, because <laughs> I think if you if you're if you're Lawrence, you know what you're bringing in. It's true. And if you're Lawrence, you're the top dog. Mm. So like you are the boss, you're yeah. the owner. So it's not like Fernando can be like, oh well, I think we should no you no Fernando no. doing that way. <laughs> like I, I've said, we're going this way. You're no. So I, I think Fernando also knows what is kind of the parameters that he's walking into as well. It's not like he, you know, Aston Martin is brand spanking new and Lawrence just bought the team. It's been around now for, what, two years? Mm -hmm. This yeah. would be the third season. Um, so I, I think if you wanted to bring any driver in that is currently on the grid, you know, you've got your choice to develop a car. I don't think Alonso is is in the bottom tier of that. I think he's in, not not, no, he's not absolutely up there. He will no. drive the wheels off that car, and they're going to get so much <clears throat> data off of it and his insight. I mean, he's a world champion as well. Um, uh, so it's not like he's you know some Johnny come lately. I think he'll do, I think he'll do really well for them. Obviously, he's Fernando Alonso. The the one thing that I'm concerned about is that. You know, Fernando was getting frustrated being Esteban Ocon's teammate and being raced a little bit harder than you would hope for. I have concerns about him being a teammate of Lancey Boy. They're valid concerns. Because um, whilst I think Stroll is a little bit underrated in terms of just his general pace, he does Agreed. continue to do stupid things on a regular basis. Like Agreed. A relatively regular basis. Yeah. Where Alonso is the type of character where he will, he will get to a point where he's fed up of that and it will become very apparent. Like, you'll get the team radios where he's complaining and stuff like that. Mm. And he was okay with it in Kota because he was like, oh, I'm going to Aston Martin. He's going to be my teammate. I can't say anything too crazy. 
when he is actually his teammate, mm. he will say something crazy. Yeah. And that's what I'm concerned about. Because Lawrence is, you know. Maybe he has a huge <clears throat> character development. Maybe. Or like Sebastian. <laughs> Look, I, I think that... Becomes a hippie, just like out of nowhere. That would be great. No, nah, that, that's not happening. Nah. <laughs> that bit won't happen. I will, I will eat my hat if that happens. But I, I, could, I could imagine him kind of just... I think the infrastructure Aston father, have, yeah. and sort of the personnel that they have, yeah. they're, and sort of the... Again, I'm an outsider. It's not like I kind of have ever been in there or anything like that. Um, it just I get the feeling that they've kind of started to build... You know, it's not a new team anymore. They're bringing the right types of people in and you're sort of seeing it on track. But in the infrastructure side, they're also kind of doing that. And I think it would be kind of and sort of against all of that for Fernando to come in and kind of be like, yeah, no, not interested. Not yeah. talking to you. No, mm. not doing this thing. Yeah, yeah. Blah, blah, blah. Well, no, because uh, uh, and as much as when it first was announced that he was joining Aston, I was surprised. I think most people were surprised. I think actually when you look at it, which team would you gamble on being able to deliver a, a title championship fighting car as much as the Alpine's quicker at the moment I think you look at the Aston infrastructure you look at the investment that Lawrence has both in Aston Martin as a brand that he part owns marketing that well with a good F1 team because we've seen what that's done again like Mercedes that's a complete yeah. change yeah. Aston Martin haven't been doing very well <clears throat> like from a you know from a stock price point of view not that anything has but I'm just saying that I think that there's that level of investment now I think it was the right choice for Fernando and yeah. I just hope it I hope it works out for him because He's like when you look at two world titles, this is a man who clearly should have more given the quality of yeah. his. You look at what he ability. did at McLaren, like those. So, like when I started working in the industry, mm. and I'm like, oh, yeah, McLaren, blah, blah, blah. And they're at the back, and I'm like, what's, what's going on? I thought it was like, <laughs> yeah. I'm like yeah. what? Like, um, for to sort of see like how he managed that sort of period and not to say that like the car got massively better but i think those two cars 2017 2018 would have been in a much worse situation if he wasn't kind of at the helm kind yeah. of holding them yeah. accountable and i think that's what kind of thing he's going to bring to aston martin where it is kind of like okay this is not good enough it should be at this level yeah 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 and i mean in the history of aston martin i mean obviously i know vettel has kind of been there and, and stuff like that but i just think alonso will develop it kind of better than than seb to an extent like i i think seb seb's presence was kind of like this is championship this is the level you need to be at and then alonso's thing is like cool <clears throat> seb's done that groundwork yeah. Yeah. my job is to Actually, bring that sort you. of yeah. here's the car this is what it should be doing etc and they kind of complement each other in that way and that's not me saying yeah, yeah. worse than fernando or whatever <laughs> 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 they're just yes different. it is <laughs> <laughs> just different just I different am, characters yeah. and just different mandates they've probably come mm. in with. yeah exactly yeah yeah, I mean, they can't ask for two more experienced and... <laughs> like, if they, if they can't make it work with Seb and then going into Alonso going forward, then... Next up, Lewis. Boom. Yeah, that's it. 